Hey everybody, welcome back. Kovac here, and for this one, the time has come for yet another tier list video. So for this one, I am going to be doing uh, my my opinion, of course, uh, top 10, 15 best tier 1 pets for PV pet paddles inside of uh, Dragonflight, the current expansion. Now, like I said, it's going to be completely opinionated. Some people may agree, some people may not. That's perfectly fine. I uh, definitely would like to hear your suggestions in the comments below. Maybe there's a pet that you don't see that you feel like should be mentioned. Uh, feel free to let me know that down below. So, great stuff there. A uh, bit of a disclaimer. Uh, there will be no honorable mentions. I did that in the last uh, tier list video, and it was well over an hour. Not necessarily that that's a bad thing, but, you know... I tried to get this out as quickly as I can, so I did that for the last one, not doing that for this one. It's just going to be strictly the 15 pets that you see here. So without further ado, let's hop into it. I'll be going over uh, how to get them, preferred breed if there are multiple breeds, and the move set that I highly recommend uh, if they're proficient in two different, you know, uh, builds, then I'll mention that, but uh, more in, more often than not, there's only going to be one efficient build, so uh, let's hop right into this. Now, starting off, we have the Jeweled Sapphire Whelpling, introduced in this expansion, actually. Uh, you get it from Jewel Crafting, one breed available to it, which is absolutely perfect for it. Now, I would say this is probably the absolute best Dragonkin pet in the game currently, I would think. Uh, it a close second would be the Moon Touch Another Whelp, and I absolutely love that dragon because it's really good. Uh, this one is really, really damn good. Very fast speed. You can be faster than Anomalous, you know, Ore Eater, uh, Fiendish Imp, various things like that. You're even faster than the damn Bronze Whelp Link, which is basically a copy of this pet. I'm pretty sure they even have the same move set. Uh, the only difference is the breed, of course. They're both SS, but this one is way faster. So you're even faster than that damn thing. So very fast speed. Really, you could run Flame Breath or Arcane Slash. Really up to you. Um, oh, and then I mentioned it was Jewel Crafting. So you could totally make it yourself. Or you could buy it off the auction house. I don't recall it being that expensive. So yeah, again, Flame Breath or Arcane Slash. Really could run either. Uh, Wild Magic will pair very well with Flame Breath. So that's pretty good there. Uh, Crystal Prison is probably going to be the one that you're going to go with more often than not, with you being very fast. And then, of course, if you're running Crystal Prison, do not run Arcane Storm, otherwise uh, you can't stun the enemy. Uh, so Liftoff is definitely going to be the way to go there. Now, it does have under, you know, 1400 health, but it really makes up for it in that speed category. I say it all the time, speed is probably the best stat as far as uh, Pet Battles is concerned, so being faster... Uh, more often than not, we'll actually get you a victory, so that's pretty good there. So yeah, again, Jeweled Sapphire Whelpling. Uh, really, really damn good pet. Highly recommend getting it if you haven't already. Next up, we have the Dusky Dreadwing Pup. A little bat here from Revendreth and Shadowlands. It is wild caught, so you can easily go to Revendreth and just look around for it. it. does have multiple breeds available to it. Best breed for sure is the Power Power. Again, you can run really any breed and you're going to do very well. Power Power Breed is probably the best because you're hitting the hardest. Now, Sonic Blast and Bite, two basic attacks. I prefer Sonic Blast, that way I'm a double counter to Beast. Uh, Murder, I don't recommend running that or Siphon Life. This pet pairs very, very well on Toxic Fume pets, uh, especially Anomalous, of course. So, huge fang. It's some sort of bug, but as long as Toxic Fumes is up, and you go to go for Huge Fang here, I believe the damage is actually already maxed out, which is insane. Absolutely insane damage. One round cooldown, but that's perfectly fine, because you're going to be doing a shite ton of damage there. So, pretty insane stuff. And then Wing Buffet, of course, a really great swap out. Uh, with you being a flyer, you should be going faster, 9 times out of 10. Unless, of course, you're going against a faster flyer. So, there's that for you. So, you could swap out those pesky uh, Fiendish Imps or a Jingles or something. Something that's trying to set up on you, anything like that. Go ahead and swap them out. Um, now, outside of a 
Toxic Fumes teams. He's still pretty damn strong, but really he's getting his strength from the whole bug with Huge Fang there. So uh, that's why he's on the list here. Pretty damn good stuff. I highly recommend having him on a uh, Toxic Fume team. Otherwise, he's just above average. So Dusky Dreadwing Pup, Wild Caught, recommend going to get him if you haven't already. Foul Wing Buzzer. Now this could be a little bit more difficult to get your hands on as opposed to the bat here. Uh, this is a drop in Maldraxxus. Not too sure what the drop chance is there, but you can get him off the auction house. I remember paying quite a bit for him, so the prices might have dropped down a little bit ever since then. Uh, you never know. It's been an expansion already. Uh, SS Breed for sure is going to be the way to go here. He does have multiple breeds for him, so I would just scan the auction house every now and again until you find an SS Breed, because uh, you're definitely going to need it for sure. Uh, Great Sting and Barb Stinger and Wing Buffet is pretty much your bread and butter. You're not even going to worry about these right here uh, because you're going to be pairing it up once again on the Toxic Fumes team. Uh, go figure. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, it's just all about weather, weather, weather. Toxic Fume being one of the best. So uh, Great Sting obviously going to last an extra turn up under it. Uh, Wing Buffet hitting pretty hard for being a swap out you know most swap outs don't hit that hard but wing buffet does but it does have that five round cooldown uh, with you being a fast flyer again you should be going first more often than not and even if you fall below your racial you're still really fast you're going to be faster than baseline 325 speed pets uh, and then you know various other weird uh, three, you know, 26 or something like that pets that you might find here and there. There are some weird ones out there like 301, stuff like that. Uh, but you're going to be faster than them. Overall, really, really solid pet. Again, you're definitely going to want to be using this thing on a Toxic Fumes team. Now, outside of that, it can still perform very, very well because Great Sting is very good. And then the swap out, but other than that, uh, it'll just be, again, probably above average like the pup here. All right, moving on. We have the Moon Touch Netherwelp that I mentioned earlier. Now, you can't acquire this pet anymore, unfortunately. It was promotional, so if you have it, awesome. If not, sorry to hear that, because, you know, as far as I'm aware, you can't obtain it anymore unless a Blizzard just randomly decides to add it into, like, the shop or something. You know what I mean? Uh, but outside of that, one breed available to it. Fantastic breed, I would say. Uh, this is one of those pets where I feel like you can run really anything and you're going to perform very well But the preferred move set that I like is Needle Claw, Void Slap, and Ashes of Atlan Again, you can run the other build too and you will perform quite well because it's that damn good of a pet uh, Needle Claw especially because this thing absolutely terrorizes and destroys Sunlight Teams I have 1v3 Sunlight Teams with this pet and it was a fun time for me, bad time for him It was great <laughs> But just insane damage with Needle Claw. Uh, Dragon Ratio popping in there. The dot damage increasing as well. Void Slap for, you know, extra AoE. Uh, Ashes of Outland, just damn good ability. It is the only damaging uh, blind ability in the game right now. Most blinds don't do damage. They just throw out that blind. But this does over 400. Even more than that if you have your Dragonkin Racial. And blinds are just really damn good. Because despite a resilience debuff from something like, you know, food coma, you could still blind pets. So, very, you know, borderline OP, I would say. So, pretty great stuff. 36 teams so far with him, so really, really solid. Again, if you don't have it, you know, sorry to hear that. But for those who do have it, uh, I would level it up. What are you doing? This thing is so, so good. Uh, next up, a Cure Tunneler. Uh, really, really good critter. Uh, really solid for taking on various traps, especially from the elementals, such as Ragnaros or, uh, you know, Cinder Pup, stuff like that. Uh, you know, just overall, an, a, uh, you know, humanoid counter, especially if they have elemental damage, such as the Fiendish Imp, it's really not going to be doing a whole lot to it. Uh, one breed available. It is a rare drop over in Eldum from the Visions. I highly recommend just buying it off the auction house. Uh, one breed available, so you don't have to worry about uh, multiple breeds, of course. 
Uh, definitely take Claw. Why would you take Flurry? Look at that speed. That's that's pathetic. Uh, but he really doesn't need it uh, because Claw is perfectly fine. Sandstorm, of course, that's his bread and butter. And then Shell Shield, pairing that up with Sandstorm, you're effectively taking, you know, 180 less damage. It's basically like a mini Shell Armor. So, really great stuff. Elemental attacks are going to be doing almost nothing to you. So, really, really awesome stuff there. Again, a bit of a rare pet, but once you get your hands on it, uh, you, you won't be disappointed. Uh, and just Sandstorm is so damn good with all that damage there. So Kier Tundler, really solid. Uh, Lost Quill. Now this pet is very, very good for setting up. It is very fast. Uh, it is faster than actually some flyers, really slow flyers that is, because of its 366 speed, which is hilarious. Um, you know, low health, but it's one of the few magic types that is able to effectively take advantage of that magic type ratio so pretty great stuff there again you can run almost anything you want and perform well i don't run nevermore it's not the greatest in the world and it's a 10 round cooldown uh stay a while and listen is so so damn good it's basically food coma but a magic type ability uh, plot twist arcane slash i prefer arcane slash because look at that speed you're going to be going first more often than not you're even faster than a jeweled sapphire wealthling so really great stuff there spectral spine is okay but deep research is way better now the first round that you use this you will take a turn of enacting so you can't do anything but it is basically like a decoy but has a way lower uh, cooldown so that's pretty good to make up for it. And then again, stay a while and listen. Two rounds sleep. So you could set this up and switch out, throw down a minefield. Uh, maybe go into a weather pet, throw out your weather, whatever you want to do. Because they either have to stay in or swap out because they can't do anything. Unless, of course, they're a critter. Because then they won't you know, have to worry about that. But other than that, it's, it's so good. So good. And like I said earlier, you can pair that up with blinds such as Ashes of Outland. And still get that off even with the resilience debuff from stay a while and listen so really great stuff lost quill really awesome uh, coincidentally it is a drop from the lost quill and raven draft not too sure what the drop chance is there but again I highly recommend just getting it off the auction house alrighty moving on we have trunks here now he is from the awfully big adventure where you have to face various pet tamers with the Elec plushie. Um, you, I don't think you ever have to actually have it out in combat if you don't want to. As long as it's on your team, you will get credit for it, including having to do all the tamers in the celestial tournament. So it will take quite a while, hence the name awfully big adventure. But once you have it, it is so, so worth it. Uh, his speed does not matter. It's all about that sweet, sweet attack power there that amazing health and then the absolute insane damage of avalanche now if you're running a moonfire build that would be appropriate for running when elix fly but you're wanting to, going to want to pair him up with a pet that can buff up his hit chance to 100 such as poda or you know mr wiggle something like that otherwise just run smash you could still run moonfire still hits really really hard ethereal is really good too all of these abilities are really, really good. I highly recommend taking Avalanche over a Headbutt. Uh, Avalanche just does an absurd amount of damage. If you're running him on the Blizzard team, it's going to be doing even more damage up under Blizzard. So, really, really solid stuff there. Uh, it may take a while to get him, I know, but once you have him, it's well worth it. I promise. Alright, next up we have the Living Sandling. Now, this pet, it was introduced way back in MOP. Now, it really didn't become all that good until, I think, BFA is when we really started seeing it, you know, shining with uh, the whole buff to weather damage. You know, it's elemental, high health, pretty great attack. Uh, elemental, so you don't have to worry about missing or anything like that. Sandstorm hitting really hard, quicksand hitting hard, and reducing that speed. It's just so, so good. You get him from Throwing the Thunder. 
There are various breeds available to him, but really anyone you could run. I prefer to help power for the extra damage. Now, he is pretty dirt cheap. I'm sure you can get multiple drops of him in Throne of Thunder if you wanted to go get him yourself. But, again, if you rather just save the time, go to the auction house. Pretty dirt cheap. Something like 50 gold. Something like that. So, very affordable for everybody. Uh, Sandbolt, of course, for that extra speed reduction. Sandstorm, obviously. And then Quicksand. Uh, these other abilities, I, I just I don't recommend. Punch is the only one I would consider but sand bolt i would say is way better uh and then these two of course it's just an absolute no-brainer living sandling very easy to get and very very good inside of pvv pet battles nightshade no brainer here this thing is still running rampant and uh getting the job done destroying them dragon kins and just wreaking havoc all over <laughs> all over in azeroth such a damn good pet it can be very difficult to get your hands on. You're going to want the SS breed once again. Uh, it is a chance upon a chance pet to get. So over in Warlords, you have Herbalism. So you'll you'll pick the herb. You have a chance for the mob to spawn. And then that mob has a chance to drop, I think, an item or something. Or maybe it's just a nightshade. And then you got a small chance of getting that. On top of that, if you do get the nightshade... Uh, you have, you know, effectively about a 10% chance of getting the correct breed because there are uh, 10 breeds here, as you can see. So, <laughs> it's it's very luck dependent. I recommend just getting it off the auction house. Scan the auction house every few days or so until you finally find that SS breed because I promise you, you won't regret it. Now, again, you can really run any of these abilities here and you will perform very, very well. Uh, the build that is used more often than not, obviously, is going to be Lash, called Darkness and Blinding Poison. Again, blinds. Super, super good. Elemental. Doesn't have to worry about missing up under Darkness. Uh, and also, if you'd rather run Nature's Ward, you totally could. Still have him on the Darkness team, and he will not be affected at all with the healing reduction because of him being Elemental, of course. So, really, really damn good. I even did a gimmick team one time running this build right here. And I just completely swept. He was actually the MVP of the team, so that was pretty great. But Lash, Call Darkness, and Blinding Poison is probably going to be the better build for sure. So yeah, it might take you a little bit of time to get him, but I promise you, very, very damn good. I've got him on a lot of teams, and he just... He's the MVP for my team a lot of times, so really great stuff right there. Alrighty, next up we have Jingles. Now, Jingles is from the Feast of the Winter Veil vale event, so basically Christmas time. Uh, all you do have to do is go up to the Christmas tree in the capital city, loot the uh, Christmas boxes there, and then you're guaranteed to get them. So if you don't have them now, just wait a few more months and Christmas will be here. So just bide your time there. Otherwise, most people will have them, or her, I guess it might be a she raptor wouldn't want to misgender the damn thing am i right <laughs> but uh yeah just a really damn good pet very fast very fast indeed uh, not as quite as fast as lost quill but still really damn fast uh hits surprisingly pretty hard despite having not that much attack power because of booby trap presence and uh get to the winter's veil again if you're running on the toxic fumes team huge fang is going to be doing a shite ton of damage once again because of that bug but you totally could run pounce if you want because you got the speed to back it up uh, i would obviously run booby trap presence and gift of the winter's veil vale over these two right here they're okay but they're just not as good of course and then with your beast ratio you're going to be hitting even harder with these abilities so uh, yeah i don't know why you run these feed is okay but it's not doing the most amount of damage in the world so definitely uh, run with the gift right here uh, overall really really damn good stuff all these teams i've got him in and he performs very very well or her whatever the stamp breed of this thing is all right moving on we have rot breath uh, definitely one of my favorite pets in the game for sure um rot breath again rare drop in the oldham visions he can be pretty pricey so i recommend just getting one of them off the auction house uh, high attack power there, so he's going to be hitting really hard with Toxic Fumes. 
and the, his poisons and whatnot. He's got two very viable. Oh, excuse me. He's got two very viable, um, you know, move sets he can go with right here. So you got the Toxic Fumes build right here, and then you got the Acid Rain Dreadful Breath here. I played with both a lot. I really like both. I honestly kind of prefer the Dreadful Breath one more over the Toxic Fumes. But again, you can really run either or whichever one you want, and you'll do very, very well. Uh, Spike Skin, if you're running this build right here, I have used that against Anomalous, and it just absolutely destroyed them. I think I was going against like three of them, and Rot Breath totally 1v3'd his whole team thanks to Spike Skin. It was really hilarious, so uh, great stuff there. Because some people like to sleep on Spike Skin, but it's surprisingly way better than you think. Especially if you add the uh, beast ratio onto that, then you're going to be dealing even more reflect damage. So really good stuff there. Again, you can run another build you want, just about what you want to do. Uh, damn good stuff there. So I highly recommend picking up Rock Breath if you haven't already. All right, next up we have Timeless Mechanical Dragon Link. Now this is from Tenaris during the Time Walking event of uh, Shadowlands. He just costs a measly 200 of those little uh, that little currency there. I just run right in, purchase him from the vendor. I think you can get him off the auction house. I'm not 100% sure on that, but again, auction house or the vendor, he's not expensive whatsoever, but he is really, really good. Mechanical ratio, so that's great. Uh, great health, fantastic attack. Speed is negligible. You don't really have to worry about that. Uh, flame breath. And then really you could run either Raise of Talons or Time Bomb. Raise of Talons is basically another version of Black Claw. But Time Bomb I would say is way better. Uh, deals quite a bit of damage after a few rounds and then stuns them. So pretty great stuff there if you want to pair it up like after you throw down your decoy. And then of course decoy. Armageddon is, you know, okay. But it would be really great if you're running him with like Merkelot or up under lightning storm or something like that but decoy is definitely way better i mean come on why why would you pick armageddon it's it's so so good so yeah flame breath time bomb decoy or you could sub in razor towns if you want for even more damage there it's perfectly fine but uh this is going to be your main build right here so really great stuff cheap pet to get and uh just really fantastic in pvp all right, here we have the last three, what I would consider the best of the best, honestly. So the MPV, AKA Mechanical Pindar and Dragling, released way back in MOP. He got better over the years, and uh, recently they even buffed his damage to Thunderbolt, so made him even better. Uh, he is from Engineering, so you totally could make one yourself if you wanted to, but he really doesn't cost that much, so you could easily get him off the auction house. Only one breed available to him, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, crap ton of teams there. Uh, the build you're obviously going to run is Breath, Thunderbolt, Decoy. I'd stay far away from this build right here, unless if you're playing some sort of silly gimmick team. Uh, Breath, you're a double counter to magic types. Uh, great stuff there. Thunderbolt, just a damn good AoE ability. Like I said, they buffed it. I think at one point they nerfed the damage and the... Uh, cooldown to like five rounds and then like 400 and some damage split but then they buffed it and then went back to four rounds and then over 500 damage so they just made it even better and then decoy once again no brainer damn good ability so yeah mpd still very fantastic over all these years all right kiarji garling such such a damn good pet i, I just how else can i express it so good so so good it could take a little while to find one now it has to be summertime which obviously ended very recently we're in september now so you can't unfortunately get one right now but once summertime does roll back around uh, you just have to go and find a correct breed i would just get the add-on pet battle breed id that way you can you know skim through the different ones you find over there and sell it this so you, until you find the correct breed once again ss again you can run other breeds and he will do very well but performs the absolute best as the ss breed uh obviously your 
go-to build is going to be Crush, Sandstorm, Blackout Kick. Now, the main strat that I've seen with him, uh, start out with him if you're faster, Blackout Kick, Sandstorm, Swap Out. That way you get those to uh, get off cooldown sooner, and then when you bring him back in, he's got those ready to go again. He just does so much damage, able to, you know, uh, CC pets with Blackout Kick, assuming you're faster. You should be faster more often than not, because... You know, 325 speed, nothing to scoff at. And then he absolutely tears apart Dragon Kid Pets with Crush here. I would say far away from this build here. It's very weird that he has Whirlwind uh, here competing with Crush. So definitely go with this build right here. So, so good. Even after all these years, such a damn good pet. Uh, again, Summertime. All right, and then once again, the King of Kings has not been dethroned yet, surprisingly. Uh, Anomalous. Surprise, surprise. Who, who didn't see this coming? Show of hands. But yes, Anomalous here. He is from the Visions, but he is absolutely dirt cheap, kind of like the Living Sandling, so like 50 gold or less, something like that, so very easy to get off the auction house i mean he just costs like nothing and he is so op uh, one breed available to him crazy attack power pretty fast speed uh, really low health but again he's one of those few magic types that can actually effectively take advantage of their magic racial uh, because of having such little health so he can't take more than like 300 damage or something like that in one hit uh 40 17 so that ought to tell you something uh, again, this is one of those pets you can really run anything and do very well, but the build I prefer is Corrosion, Toxic Fumes, and Poison Protocol. I mean, these two are just a no-brainer whenever it comes to Toxic Fumes. Uh, Contagion Strike could be pretty good up under that if you want to deal extra damage to Dragonkins, who are going to have, you know, the advantage over you being a magic type. But uh, Poison Protocol I feel like is way, way better. Especially under Toxic Fumes, it's going to last an extra turn. And it just, this ability absolutely destroys Bubble. It destroys Decoy because it technically hits six times. Uh, two times per pet that's alive. Um, it applies, you know, it does a little bit of damage up front and then it applies the dot, which considers as a hit. So if Decoy's up, it's going to get taken down immediately. So. Uh, pretty great stuff there. And then again, Ooze Touch deals a lot of damage, but Corrosion will at last an extra turn under Toxic Weather here. And then that extra damage buildup is pretty nice, especially with, you know, Poison Protocol. You're just absolutely melting your opponent's team with so much dot damage. Uh, best counter to this pet, of course, is going to be something faster or with a stun. Uh, Dragonkin damage right here. Stuff like that. Sandstorm could give it some trouble too, but at least you have that Toxic Fumes right there in your back pocket to uh, pop out and change the weather. But yeah, he's just so damn good despite all these years. Never a nerf in sight. I uh, highly doubt they're ever going to nerf him by this point. I mean, it's been years now and he's still really damn good. So Anomalous, if for whatever reason you don't have it definitely go get you one because he is just so good so so good in pvp Alrighty, and that will wrap it up for this one i feel like i rapid fired through those ones pretty quickly so got that out in a timely manner i feel like so yeah i really hope you all enjoyed watching this is the uh tier list for dragonflight and sad to say, I'm not 100% sure on this, but this might be my very last one. I'm not sure, because a lot of people would agree that WoW is kind of dying right now. So, not a whole lot going on. I know you've been subbed a while right now, but I wanted to, at some point, get on here and, uh, you know, make at least one more tier list video. But I'll probably go over that, you know, in a future video at some point. But, uh... For now, this is what I believe to be the top 15 best pets in PvP pet battles right now. Again, opinionated. So if you you know something else that you feel like should have been on here, feel free to let me know. That is perfectly fine. I'd love to hear everybody's suggestions and all that in the comments below. But without further ado, I thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, have a lovely day.